Hello, welcome to the Horticulturalists. I am Matthew Lucas. And I'm Stephen Ryan. And we post every week, so hit subscribe and the notification bell if you want to follow our continuing horticultural adventures, Stephen. Yes, and today we're somewhere very special. We are the wonderful Cruden Farm. Yes. Tell us about Cruden Farm, Stephen. All right, Cruden Farm, it's become one of the iconic gardens in Victoria and possibly in Australia. Uh, it belonged to Dame Elizabeth Murdoch, one of uh, Australia's most beloved philanthropists. Who you had tea with. Uh, who I had tea with. Um, she lived till beyond 100 and she gardened on this site for over 80 years. So it's a remarkable achievement. And many thanks to the team here at Cruden Farm who've allowed us to come in and film. It's very generous of them. But we're here to look at something specific, Stephen, are we not? Yes, one of the iconic features of this garden is its wonderful avenue. And it's an avenue perhaps unlike many other avenues. It is, and in fact today's story is about avenues that are different. Mm. So, we've come to Cruden Farm to look at a particularly important avenue. <gasps> I am very excited because this is one of the, the high points of Australian gardening history and law. Let's go and have a look, Stephen. What a good idea. So Stephen, what's your history with this amazing garden? Well, Dame Elizabeth Murdoch was one of those amazing gardeners and yeah. of course she was always on the lookout for somebody who might be able to supply her with some interesting plants. Yeah. She used to come up to my nursery and buy some plants. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, even in her late 90s, she was still interested in the garden. And I remember coming down and having that famous morning tea. Yeah. She dragged me out into the garden and she said, Stephen, see those little autumn snowflakes over there? I bought those from you 10 years ago. And look how well they're multiplying. So there you go. Excellent. Now, for our viewers who might not know, can we just put Dame Elizabeth in context in terms of Australian gardening? Yes, well, she was obviously a keen gardener from when she was first married. Yes. She married Sir Keith at about 19. So point out to some viewers who might not know that we are talking about Dame Elizabeth Murdoch of the Murdoch. Um, oh, yes, of the Murdoch family. Newspaper family. Yes, and uh, Keith Murdoch was, in fact, a paper magnate in his time. Yep, yep. And, of course, some of his family have taken that on as well. They have indeed. Yes. And as we're walking, viewers, you might be able to see behind us that we are, in fact, walking along the most famous aspect is it true to say of this garden which I, is yes. which is the avenue of lemon scented gums uh carimbia citriodora and i believe edna walling who was also a famous person and was involved in the design of this garden yeah uh decided that this would be the perfect tree to use as an avenue and she sent uh, Keith and Elizabeth off to plant them, so they planted them personally. Yeah. And they are remarkably closely planted together. And I initially thought this might be sort of, you know, young gardeners making their first early mistakes or whatever. But it would seem that, in fact, Edna Walling suggested that the trees should be planted at this close spacing, uh -huh. which has this wonderful sort of almost colonnaded effect as all you can, the way along the as driveway. you can see behind us there, yeah. Yeah, so the lemon-scented gums were an inspired choice. They yeah. grow very well here. Uh, because they're quite closely planted, of course, they're never going to grow into large spreading trees. No. So it's all about the trunks, and oh. that's what makes this interesting avenue particularly interesting. So all these trees being so closely planted, uh, they're actually leaning out slightly from each other, and it gives it a really interesting visual effect. It certainly does. Well, I think we should pause and take a closer look at some of the aspects of this avenue and avenues in particular. What a good idea. Okay. So Stephen, given that this is a story about avenues and we have one of Australia's most famous avenues behind us, should we not perhaps define our terms before we go any further? What, Stephen Ryan, is an avenue? An avenue is a grand entrance to a property lined with trees. Ta -da. Yeah. Now, firstly, does it have to be trees? Could you have an avenue of shrubs? It doesn't have the same connotations, I don't think. And that would be shrubs. hedges. Yes, that a would row be. <laughs> parallel yeah, so hedges. I think avenues have to be substantial trees. All right, we've assumed that then. Second question, do they all have to be the same species? Could you have different a things? A mixed avenue. A mixed yeah, avenue. You can have a mixed avenue. There's no reason why not. But there is something extra grand about the repetitive effect of the same species being mm. planted as mm. an avenue. So. Most of the grandest of avenues tend to be of one species. Yeah, and you can see with this wonderful avenue behind us, that is certainly the case. And I think one of the things which you've often spoken to me about too is bark and the effect that bark has in your garden design. 
And if we look at this avenue of lemon-scented eucalypts, the bark, the tree trunk, is perhaps one of the most extraordinary features of it, isn't it? It is. The other thing that we can't see today, of course, because it's rather overcast and a bit cool, is that in the summer months, the canopies of um, the Carimbias or eucalypts uh, will cast a really beautiful mottled shade down on the driveway, which will have a cooling effect as you come up the drive. Mm. And I guess this is a good example too of using evergreens. So um, the type of species that you choose is going to dictate those kind of seasonal effects in terms of if you have autumn colour, yes. uh, if you need summer shade, and then also if you're going to underplant, I suppose, along at the base of each of the row of trees. Yes, in this case we've just got lawn up against the trees, which mm. of course with the beautiful white trunks you wouldn't want to sort of gild the lily too much with no. extra plantings. Mm. So it's been kept really simple uh, and it's working really well. It really is and it is such, there's a lovely curve, so the house is in this direction and the, the road is in that direction and it's such a lovely curve that brings you up to the house. It's in fact a, it's a reveal. It is a reveal because yeah. you can't see the house at the beginning. All you can see is the um, is the stems. Yeah. Now we're going to talk further with um, Mitch, the head gardener here, about this avenue in particular. But one of the things that you had mentioned, and that perhaps might not be the case, is that it is thought that these trees are planted too close together. <laughs> well, one could say that. I mean, if you read the textbook on planting avenues, they will give you specific spacings for planting specific groups of trees, mm. if the book exists. I'm not sure. I does. was going to say, <laughs> who is the arbiter of avenues? Is there some supreme authority on this no. is an avenue, this is not, these are the rules? No, there, there isn't. In fact, gardening rarely has such arbiters. Other but, than you. Uh, other than me, yes. But yes, one could argue that these trees have been too closely planted. Mm. Uh, and certainly if the avenue was being designed by a landscape designer today, they probably wouldn't plant them this close together. But the whole point of the trees being planted close together, it draws the trees up, it makes the trunks much more of a dominant feature. The closest of the trees actually works in, in the favour of this particular avenue. Mm. So, so I, Stephen, can you pace out the distance between these trees that are planted too close together? All right. One, two, three. That's 10 feet or three metres. Aha. Uh -huh. Are they all the same? It would look like that. One, two, three. Three, one, two, three. Evenly spaced at around about three metres or 10 feet. I think it's really a stunning way to use these trees. And I would like to think that Edna Walling specifically suggested the spacing because that's exactly what she was trying to create. And I think too, the fact that they're close together, as you look down this perspective, you get that sense of the trunks and it's really visually beautiful. I think if they were spaced further apart and the trees had become s sort of individual specimens, you wouldn't really have the same no. energy and vibe uh, as you approach the avenue. And the thing I like about it is it gives you the sense that the avenue is actually far longer than it actually is because you've got so many trees within a short That's space. That's true, an so optical illusion. It's not actually that long a driveway to this grand house. Yeah. So I don't know, it can't be more than four or 500 metres long. Mm. Uh, and yet it seems very much longer and more impressive than it actually is. That's so true. And I think perhaps that's also achieved by the fact that the end point is hidden. So because the, the avenue curves, you don't know where you're going. So it does seem longer. Yeah. That's an interesting thing to bear in mind, I guess, if you're planning an avenue. Yeah, well, Edna Walling was very good at spatial design, so that was one of her major things. And context for non-Australian viewers too is that Edna Walling was perhaps the doyen, the, the grand goddess of Australian gardening in the early 20th century, but not at the beginning of her career famed for using native plants. No, and this was early in her career, um, back in the 1920s, 30s. She became a great Australian native plant um, advocate. Mm -hmm as time went on, but her early landscapes tended to use exotic plants mainly. Mm. So she was famed for her exotic plants and her stonework mm. were, were the two things that she was well <laughs> I'd love for. to be famous for my stonework. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. She did do beautiful stonework and mm. we will do a story about some Edna Walling gardens in due course. Because there's one in Mount Macedon, isn't there? There is, and that's one I'd like to feature. There you go. So Edna Walling, watch this space. We will do more on her. Well, I think now we should go and have a chat to Mitch, the head gardener, some more specific details about maintaining this avenue. What a good idea. Mm. 
So this is Mitch Burns, the head gardener here at Cruden Farm. Thanks very much, Mitch, for taking some time to answer some questions. I think we should ask very specific questions about the upkeep of this extraordinary avenue. What a good idea. So Mitch, how long have you worked at Cruden Farm? Uh, this is my fourth winter, Matthew. Ooh. Fourth winter, is it fourth a winter? <laughs> it is, it is. So this avenue is extraordinary. What do you have to do from a sort of a gardening maintenance perspective to maintain this historic avenue? Well, we as a team uh, remove anything that falls, obviously, being a public place and a walkway we want to keep open to the public. Yeah. Anything above tractor height, if you like. Yeah. Uh, we've had technical term. Technical term. We've had the same team of arborists coming to the property now for 35 years. Oh, wow. And they will um, we'll make notes throughout the year, but they will come and assess the avenue for yeah. themselves as well and yeah. keep record of what work has been done each year on the avenue. Yeah. Now, given the, I guess, the national significance of this avenue, do you ever get a bit nervous that it's on your watch? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm like anyone who's worked at Cruden Farm, a custodian of the garden. So yeah. yes, um, we are, you know, very mindful of its significance and yeah. we aim to keep it as Dame Elizabeth envisioned yeah. um, the driveway to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So has anything ever sort of seriously happened to compromise the, the health and well-being of the avenue? Well, not on my watch, but... Good, good, good. <laughs> Excellent. In 1944... No, that's your warning. <laughs> no, there was quite a fire through um, a lot of Melbourne in 1944, and it came... Yeah. Cruden Farm wasn't spared. It came up the main driveway through the lemon-scented gums. As we're walking now, yeah. At that time, they would have been about 15 years old. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was quite an event. Um, the house luckily was spared, but much of the garden was burnt. Yeah. And uh, lemon scented gums, like many native uh, trees, are retrofitted with lignotubers yeah. in the base of the in the base of the plant. So a lot of them regenerated. So many that you're seeing are original lemon scented gums from 1929. Ah, oh, fantastic! Mm. Now the species of tree that's been used here. Uh, a lot of our viewers will not be Australian viewers, so they may like to know a little bit about it. So sure. what are we looking at? Well, lemon scented gum is uh, a member of a group of eucalypts that have been reclassified as Corymbia citradora. Yep. Uh, lemon scented um, because after rain, like we get through winter at the moment, the, the waft of the lemon scent comes up the driveway and into the house. Another wonderful asset, yes. really. Now. We know that this is quite an elderly avenue now uh, in the scheme of things. So how do we deal with successional planting? Things have been planted with succession planting in mind. So willows, for example, are, are breaking and falling and we've got Algerian oaks behind, which are much longer lived and will take up the space. In this case, uh, with the avenue of lemon scented gums, we want to stay true to the, the original design. Uh, so there are a number of, of younger specimens on the driveway uh, ranging from 10 to 15 years old. Yeah, I notice there's a couple sort of sp sporadically through the, the thing. So you're actually replanting into the same spot. Yes. So if a tree fails, how do you prepare and get the plant ready to go in? Luckily, we have a, a fantastic uh, group of volunteers mm -hmm. who are uh, working hard to take seed from different um, things of importance around the property, including the lemon scented gums. So we're able to raise our own um, oh, specimens fantastic. from this avenue and the other thing that the benefit of uh, the spacing of these trees is that their canopy isn't such that if we want to plant beneath them um, they're not taking the, the light away from the seedling. Ah, so yes because that's always an issue in an avenue isn't it that yeah. if you plant an avenue and, and one fails somewhere when the trees are mature it's often hard to get the new one started because of the canopy of the old ones. That's right. Yeah, yeah. oh that's fantastic. Thank you. Welcome. But Stephen, this isn't the only fabulous, slightly left of field avenue we've looked at, is it? No, we've been to two others and one of my favourites is coming up next, which is at a garden called Reverie in Lionville in central Victoria. So we visited that garden in summer when it was hot. I actually got sunburnt, which is not the case today. So let's step back in time and go and take a look at that beautiful Copper Beach Avenue. Good idea. I love an avenue, Stephen, and I don't think I have ever seen a Copper Beach Avenue. You'd have to do this with some conviction. Yeah. Copper Beach by nature is a very dark leafed plant. Yes. So you've got to have a little bit of the goth in you, I think, <laughs> if you're going to plant a, a gothic avenue. <laughs> a gothic avenue. That's not what struck me, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. Now these have been planted quite close together. 
They are actually at this stage, they're sort of arching over the driveway. You virtually have to drive through them to come up the driveway. The owner has decided that that's the way they're going to stay until such time as you virtually can't get up the driveway. Mm. And eventually it will become this dark, somber canopy. So you'd be coming up the driveway wondering what you were coming to. Very Game of Thronesy. Yes, it is rather. Let's hope there's no deaths at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that beautiful, that the copper in the sunlight was amazing and i guess in comparison to this avenue which is nearly a century old that is still a juvenile young pup it is it's a baby avenue at this stage mm. so interesting to see how that evolves over time um yes if we're around long enough to do the filming i guess that's one of the things isn't it about planting such a thing is that you'd have to be extraordinarily long-lived and plant it very early in your life to see it reach some kind of maturity. But Dame Elizabeth did. She, she certainly did. Over 100 and saw everything that she planted grow to maturity. Yep. And there's another interesting avenue that we had a look at. So why don't we have a look at that one as well? And one of the key things about that was that it wasn't just one row of trees, was exactly. it? Exactly. Somebody had thought to do something slightly different. <laughs> Let's go and have a look. So what is so unusual about this avenue, Stephen? All right, the basic thing that's different about this avenue is the way it's been planted. Yep. And instead of having a single row of trees on either side of the road, yes. they've actually planted three rows of trees on either side of the road. Mm. So they've had the space to actually be a little more adventurous. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to create something that's far more forest-like when the trees get going. Mm. So it should make quite an interesting effect. So an avenue doesn't have to be a single row of plots. No, trees. it can be a multitude of trees that can be in rows upon rows if you've got the space. There you go. And so what's the, the species of tree that's been used here? Well, it's a fairly classical avenue tree, of course. It's the pin oak, Quercus palustris from North America. There you go. And so it's not unusual in the species that's been used, mm. but the fact that they've got the three rows. So this is the thing that I'm, I'm curious about. Obviously, this is quite a wide road, so mm. you've got the space. Why would you plant a row of three? What do you think the logic is? If you were a plants person deciding this, what would your thinking be? Well, I think yeah. what will happen in time, and this mm. is what I'm assuming that the person who designed this thought, that as the trees grow up, the canopies of the ones closest to the road will come in and close over the top. Ah, yes. The canopies of the ones on the further side will go out over the properties behind them. Yes. And then the ones in the middle will become quite upright and narrow. So what will happen is you'll have this sense of colonnades of trunks as you come down this road. So, you know, the canopy out over the road will be high enough, so you'll be looking up and under these three sets of trees. So in the end, what you'll end up with is a colonnade of trunks that you'll be driving between. Yeah. So they're, they're planted in a zigzag pattern, so you'll see trunks behind oh, trunks. Yes, yes, yes. And so this whole thing will be this mass of trunks with a canopy coming out over your head. I think it will be like going into the cloisters somewhere. Very beautiful, very beautiful. And something you can only do with space and I guess also mm. imagination and really many trees that you plant densely together are going to follow yeah. that sort of more upright less bushy yeah. habit so of course they will and the other thing to remember is of course if you do cram your trees in if they are of the same species mm. in theory they should grow at much the same rate uh, and then what happens is they take up almost no more room than in fact one row of trees would eventually because the way the canopies would come out if they were allowed space to do it. But they're all going to die at the same time, Stephen. Happy note. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. Secession will always be an issue, immaterial of whether you plant one row or you plant three. True, true, So true. it probably doesn't matter that much. The avenue itself will last a long time, so you and I don't have to we worry. We don't need to worry about it, nor the children of children's children. Well, this is really beautiful. I'm curious to see what else we're going to look at. Well, some more avenues potentially. So interesting to see the, the double planting either side. And when you compare, well not compare, but the choice made with this one to plant the trees quite close together. So just interesting how you can kind of shake it up with the, the types of plant you're using and the conditions you've got. Yes, exactly. And in fact, how you plant them. So whether they're really close together, whether you spread them out, mm. um, 
It's all choices that can be made that will have long-term repercussions on your garden. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Yes. Well, Mr. Ryan, what a fantastic story. Alternative avenues, alternatives to, I don't know what, but perhaps <laughs> boring rows of traditional trees. Exactly. We have seen some beautiful examples. Yes, and there's probably more out there, so use your imagination. Don't plant the predictable. And actually, I'm remembering that I was very fortunate to go to the Rio de Janeiro Botanic Gardens and they have an avenue of, I think they're imperial palms. Oh, yes. I, I forget the name of the palm tree, but they've been planted in the early 19th century and they were amazing. So, yes, let your imagination run wild. If, of course, you've got room for an avenue. <laughs> Although, you can have short avenues. We didn't cover the length. Is that an avenueette? An avenue. <laughs> A mini avenue. Anyway. Thank you very much to Cruden Farm and to the team here and to Mitch, the head gardener, for spending some time with us. It's so generous of you and it's a wonderful garden. We'll put the link to the website below so you can come and visit should you be in Victoria. What a good idea. How can we possibly top this, Stephen? Historic gardens, historic avenues. What could we do next week? Oh, let's do something smaller, shall we? Uh, this has been quite an event, but it's been fantastic fun. It really has. It's been wonderful. So if you want to know what we're doing next week, do hit subscribe. We post every Friday and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye all.